mind me. You don't even know me. You know what I've seen? I've liked. And I got a good show on What's going on everyone? John from Hobbyist PCs here. This is the next video in our series. We're going to be talking about Windows settings that you need to know in order to get OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS or OBS Live, whatever you use, set up properly. I'm going to show you around the different various sound settings that you can mess around with in Windows and what you need to look at before you get things properly set up for yourself. At the same time, I'm going to show you a couple of extra tools in there that'll help make sure that you get things running the way you want them to. And I'll go over those details along the way. All right, here we are at the desktop. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to get to the main sound control panel. There are a number of different ways to get to it. I'm going to show you a few of them, but there is a really quick way to get there. First of all, the absolute fastest way to get there is if you hit the Windows key or if you click the start icon in the lower left hand corner, start typing sound. And hopefully you'll see where it says sound control panel. If not, you'll probably see it listed down here. It'll bring up this little window right here. And this lists all of your playback and your recording settings. Now, that's not the only way to get there. Let me show you a couple more. If you don't know how to get to your control panel, you can go click the start button. You can type in control panel and that'll pop up. And then you want to go over here where it says view by. You want to choose large icons, small icons, whatever works for you. I like large icons. And then you can go over to where it says sound. Brings you to the same menu. Now there's one more way. Now you can go over to the right hand corner down here and you'll see the little bubble icon and you want to go ahead and click all settings. Next thing you want to do is you want to choose system. Then you want to go down to where it says sound. Now from here, you're going to see your, your main output device. And for those who don't know, input and output are two different things. In the case of sound, usually the input device is something like a microphone and your output device is something like your speakers or your headphones. So. Keep that in mind when you look at this. From here, you can choose what your main output device is going to be. And when you select it, it's going to be set as your default device. You can see my list right here is pretty big. I got a number of different things. Most of you will probably have things like speakers or headphones listed here. It'll be listed as Realtek Audio. You might see this is just my monitor right here. Some of you might have a speaker in your monitor. So keep that in mind as well. NVIDIA typically has a sound driver for your monitor. Some of you might be using voice meter or maybe you're using a DAC or a audio interface like I am. For me, in this instance, it'll be the Focusrite USB. So that's what I'll typically use if I'm streaming on the same PC. But if I'm using a capture device or if I want to use voice meter, I'm going to want to choose voice meter input. That's usually where the audio tends to go out. It's kind of funny that it's called voice meter input, yet that's where the sound outputs from. As far as like your input devices are concerned, you click down here, you see that I have a lot less choices going on here, but I got my Focusrite USB. That's where my microphone is for you. That might be your headset with this microphone on it on the side. It might be labeled whatever your headset is named. So you're probably going to want to choose that if you're using your headset as a microphone for your stream. A lot of you are using Blue Yetis. Choose the Blue Yeti here. And then from there, you can select where your devices are. But that's not the only way to select these devices. You could also go down to where the speaker icon is in the lower right hand corner. You can click it and you can at least choose your output device from this drop down menu. So that's one thing you could also do. But to also show you how you can get to the sound control panel from here, you can just scroll down until you see sound control panel. You just click that and boom, here it is. Now I had mentioned in the previous video that I was going to show you guys what the deal is with sample rate. If you recall from my previous video, when I was showing you the sample rate portion, I mentioned that you're going to have to set the sample rate based on what your sample rate is for your sound card. And this is where you'll do it. If you go to the playback section, normally I use the Focusrite USB. So what I'm going to want to do is right click it first and go to properties. Now from here, you'll see a bunch of different tabs. There are some very useful things in here that I'm going to show you in just a moment, but we're going to focus first on the sample rate. This will help you determine what your sample rate is on your system. If we head over to advanced, you'll see this drop down menu over here. You want to click this drop down menu and you have a number of different choices to choose between when you want to choose which sample rate you want to use. Now, for a lot of you, if you're just using the default sound card on your motherboard, it's probably going to be set to 16 bit 44 one two channel. Keep in mind, you want to use two channel that is stereo. If you choose one channel, you'll be in mono. None of your audio is going to have left and right panning on it. If you rely on directional audio in your video games, obviously you don't want to use mono, but typically 16 bit 44, 100 is just fine. Now, in my case, I'm using 16 bit 48,000. That's because I am capable of doing so. And OBS studio supports that it's slightly better quality. Basically, you're probably going to hear more high end detail in the audio. It's what's considered DVD quality, whereas 44, 100 is considered CD quality. Both are totally fine. You can achieve good audio either way, but if you're really 
trying to deliver the best possible quality, then 48,000 is what you want to shoot for. Just don't get discouraged if you don't have it. In this case, you just want to make sure you're set to it, and that's what your playback device is going to be set to. Click OK. Next, you want to go ahead over to the recording tab. This is where we handle your microphone. Now, you can see that I have a Focusrite USB that's also, that also handles my mic audio as well. My microphone is plugged into my Focusrite USB audio interface. You go ahead and right-click that. And there's a couple of things I want to point out, okay? So for some of you, if you're using like a headset microphone or you're using like a, a Blue Yeti, you want to handle these those two different types of devices differently. Now, if you are using an audio interface like I am, you want to head over first to the Levels tab. And you want to make sure that this is set to 100. This is going to mess with your input volume going into the PC. So normally audio interfaces have gain knobs on them. That's where you handle the volume of your microphone not in Windows. The same thing also goes to the Blue Yeti. The Blue Yeti itself has a gain knob on it. That's where you handle the volume of your microphone, on that gain knob. In Windows, though, you want to make sure that they're set to 100, both of them. Now, if you have a headset mic, it's most likely that your headset mic won't have a gain knob on it. So when you need to adjust your gain knob and gain stage it properly, you're going to have to do it in the Windows settings here. You can just adjust the slider till you get it right, and then you can look at your meter in OBS to see where it is, where it's sitting, and then that's how you properly gain stage a headset microphone. I have another video kind of showing how I go over this, and I'll just put a card up on the screen so you can go check that video out. But heading back over to the sample rate, we're gonna go ahead and click the advanced tab, and you will see that I have everything set kind of differently here. You'll see that I'm setting this to 24 bit, and that's only because it has to do with the noise floor. I'm not gonna get too big into bit depth at the moment. Right now, OBS only supports up to 16. Having it to set to 24 bits, not a big deal for OBS. When I do recordings in Adobe Audition, for example, if I wanted to record instruments, this is pretty useful. So normally I set it to 24, but if you want to be safe, set it to be the same exact thing that you have your playback set to, and you don't have to worry about issues whatsoever. So if I was going to match mine right now, I would set mine to two channel 16 bit. That way I have access to both channels. It's a particular quirk with this actual interface here, but it's something that we're going to get into when I start talking about the mixer settings within OBS Studio. Now, once you get everything here set up properly, once you've got your proper bit rate selected and you've got everything set properly, you can go ahead and click OK. And there's one last thing that you're probably going to want to do. You're going to want to make sure that the devices you plan to use to stream are set to default. Now, you can do that within the sound control panel here. This will be considered the slow method. For your mic, it's pretty simple. You go ahead and just right-click it, and then normally it would have options. If you don't have it already set the default, there will be options there. As a matter of fact, I'll right-click here and show you. You see there will be set as default device or set as communications device. If the device you plan to use doesn't have those options, it means that it is set to both of those. The default communications device default... That is normally reserved for things like games. A lot of games tend to use the default communication device as the in-game voice chat microphone. So you're going to want to make sure that whatever device you plan to use to voice chat in-game, that is set as your default communication device. And as for the one you're going to be using for the stream, make sure that is set as the default device. Same thing goes for the playback. More than likely, you could, you could set this as your default communication device right here. If you're using voice meter, this, this is a totally different thing. I'm not going to get into that. I have a separate video set up for voice meter that will, that will release at a later time. But normally, whatever device that you're going to be listening to your voice chat in-game in, you're going to want to set that to your default communication device as well. It's mostly a safety precaution. Some games give you options to choose where you can hear your voice chat or what you can chat through, but a lot of games don't. So it's just a safety precaution to make sure that things work okay. I just make sure that whatever device I'm going to be using for streaming and gaming, I make sure that I have those set to default. And one last time, the quick way that you can set your default from the desktop, at least your output device, is that you can simply click the speaker icon and you can choose which device is going to be your default. It'll automatically set itself to default once you click it, and that's the device that you're going to be using. I recommend that you set the default before you open OBS. If you change the default after you open OBS, your audio might not work properly. So if you run into any issues where maybe you change some things and audio is not playing on your stream, try closing down OBS, changing your default to whatever it needs to be, and then restarting OBS. Now, real quickly, before I wrap this video up, just to kind of show you in the audio settings what you need to look for, I've already shown you where you can identify and find out what devices you have in your system in the sound control panel. You can then go into the audio section of OBS, and then you can also go in here and you can set your sample rate, set your channels, and you can set your desktop audio, which in this case, for me, it's both Focusrite USB, 
for the microphone and the desktop audio device, and then you'll be good to go. And of course, if you're having some issues kind of like figuring out what track is what, this is something I'll just show you really quickly without going too deep into the mixer that's reserved for a separate video. You can click this little gear icon next to whatever track. You're not really sure what it is. You can go down to properties and it'll show you what that track is set to. In this case, the track that I just clicked is set to default. That's just a nice way to help identify which tracks in your mixer are set to which device. I'm recording this on a different day because I almost forgot to mention this part, but this could be a useful tool for some people who might be using something like voice meter or perhaps just want to have their music playing in the background of the stream, but you don't want to hear it in your headphones and you're not using voice meter. It's pretty easy to get to. You can click this little bubble icon in the lower right hand corner. You can click all settings, go to system, you can go to sound, then right down here at the bottom you see advanced sound options where it says app volume and device preferences. You can go ahead and click that and now you'll see all your different apps and programs are listed here and you can set which app uses which default sound device. And this can be very useful if you're trying to route certain programs into the mixer and OBS. You can even do this with Google. If you open up Google, go to somewhere like YouTube or whatever can play audio. I'm just gonna open up one of my videos here. And then now that the audio has played briefly, you'll see that Google now pops up on the list. For whatever reason, Google won't pop up on the list unless there's some audio playing through it. But uh, from there, you can go ahead and you can route it to, you know, something using like virtual audio cable, or you can use like a sound card that you're not using while you're on stream. That's just about wraps up this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and comment down below. If there are any extra things that I might have overlooked or forgot to share, please let me know in the comments as well. Down in the description, there'll be links to my various social media pages, as well as a link to the Hobbyist PCs community discord where you can get help with various things having to do with hardware stream setup or perhaps you're having a technical issue with your pc that you're kind of stuck on we could do our best to try to help you out it's also linked to the merch page we get coffee mugs and t-shirts available if you would like to purchase any of those and of course if you would like to stay up to date with anything going on on the channel please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications and you'll be notified anytime we upload to the channel appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video thank you very much and have a pleasant day